Okay, so we're live now, Chelsea. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Episode 12, 13 of Self Made. I'm not even keeping track now. But uh, yeah, special guest, Chelsea Miller. Thank you so much for tuning in. Want to say what's up, Chelsea? Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. So uh, I just want to give you guys some background on Chelsea. Um, Chelsea Miller from the Massachusetts area. She went to Babson which is the number one entrepreneurship school in the world. I said the country, but then Chelsea corrected me and was like, no, it's the world. But um, I think what's really, really cool is through there, she got to do some really, really cool stuff. She uh, studied abroad and taught entrepreneurship in Rwanda. She was e-board of her sorority, worked two really, really cool internships. And uh, upon graduating magna cum laude, she decided to go work for herself, build her own business, as opposed to going out and getting a corporate job, which, uh, I mean, I'm sure she would have gotten some really, really prestigious opportunities there, too. But uh, any thoughts on that? Was that a proper intro? It's, it was a great intro. You can intro me any day. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Chelsea, let's talk about why you went to Babson for school and what your mindset was growing up. Yeah, totally. Um, so... I was a total nerd. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was a total nerd in school and gr growing up in high school, I always found it really hard to like achieve. So I, um, had a couple of different learning disorders, ADHD, you know, all, all the different things. So when I, I would work so hard in school and I was, you know, barely scraping by as a B student. Um, but Babson was always one of my top schools that I wanted to go to because I grew up with two parents that were serial entrepreneurs. Um, and so I, when I found out that there was a school for entrepreneurship, that sounded like amazing. So I, I applied there along with a bunch of other schools. Um, and I honestly had no, I really didn't think I was going to get in. And so I was so excited when I did get in. And I remember just like, all my friends being so shocked and I and it was one of I actually got to have an interview and I swear it was the interview that got me in um, and I, I was um, I was talking about leadership and stuff like that and Babson just values students that like really take initiative outside of the classroom um, so going at when I was when I chose to go to Babson and I was looking at other schools that were bigger because I was really against I was like oh that's small I'm like, eh. but when I chose to go to Babson I was I <laughs> Like I said, I'm a nerd. So I was looking at the course catalog and I'm like, look at how cool these classes look. Like, no, I wasn't the football team, which we don't have, or like any of that stuff. I literally was like, but look at, and their classrooms are like so like well designed. Um, and just knowing that it was number one for entrepreneurship. And I was honestly getting, going to Babson. I was actually so shocked when I first started doing so well that I wrapped up my grades that I got my first semester and gave it to my parents as a Christmas gift. Um, and it, what it came down to is that I just, you know, I was just really excelling in the entrepreneurial aspect of building, being in a school that was, had all of its lessons around business instead of around, you know, a normal classroom setting, which I really excelled at. And I mean, doing so well right out of, out of the gate, did you get your passion from entrepreneurship from your parents? Yeah, to I mean, absolutely. So, I mean, both my parents, um, you know, grew up and my mom didn't go to college. My dad got um, an associate's degree that he paid for for himself. They were extremely entrepreneurial um, and determined to, um, you know, rise up in their lives. And they just always instilled that in me when I was growing up because um, they always taught you to like have control. They always were like, have control of your future. If you don't build your own dreams, then you're going to be building somebody else's and that anything is possible. Like these are things that I just was always instilled in me growing up. Like our, our car rides was literally me in the backseat listening to them talk business all the time. So, I mean, my mom had owned a skincare company. She'd owned a makeup company. My dad had multiple, um, insurance and financial companies. And I just didn't know any different than having my parents get to be around all the time. Um, you know, like I grew up with parents who coached my soccer team and were able to pick me up after school because they were able to set their own hours. So I just didn't even understand the concept of not having that time freedom in your life. Wow, that's so powerful. So I'm assuming you growing up, you never had your parents tell you a mindset of, oh, Chelsea, like that's too expensive or like wealthy people, they eat off golden spoons or... <laughs> Like, oh, that side of the neighborhood, that's for those rich people and they're jerks over there. Did you yeah. 
ever have those phrases growing up? No, no. So when it came to money, my parents always taught me to value it because I mean, they did, they came from, you know, middle America families and, you know, or lower middle America families. And so they, they valued a dollar, they valued um, money. So I was always taught like, don't disrespect your money. Um, just because you have, it doesn't mean that you should disrespect it. So I like, I really pay attention to, I'm like actually one of the most annoyingly thrifty shoppers ever. Like my friends refuse to go to the store with me because they're like, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't know. I like, maybe if it was like $10 they're so like, it's a pair of jeans. So like, I always grew up that way, but it was always taught to me that like money mindset, like I grew up, like mo most kids were playing like regular board games. Like I was playing cash flow for kids by Robert Kiyosaki. Like that was our board game at home. Okay. So like money mindset was always like money is a tool and it is in a, like the more money you have, the more good you could do. And being financially stable can provide, um, can provide so much for yourself and also giving back. Like at Christmas, I, I still remember we would go shopping to bring um, presents to um, kids in need. And so respecting money, but knowing that it can, that'll making money can be valuable and that it can actually do better in the world than if you're just someone that's also in need. Okay. And, and I mean, having such a great financial mindset, you go to Babson, what's, what was going through your mind as you were going through? Um, so this is, this is a funny part for me because I grew up always knew, knowing that I wanted to be in the network marketing industry, which was like super weird because my parents, they had left, I mean, they had been in the network marketing industry in their early, late, early, early thirties, late twenties, but then they had left it and they were doing other things. Um, so I, had just been like obsessed with it since I was a kid. I was like, I want to wear ball gowns and I want to like, and like look at all these cool pictures of you. And like, I can share makeup with people like that. Like that was like their past company and stuff. And what, when I went to Babson, it was really funny because Babson's one of those schools that is extremely driven. Like they're the students there are not only having a full course load, but they're running their own business and having side jobs. And like you would literally have people leaving their classrooms to pick up a phone call and be on a business, which was like such an interesting experience. Um, and so while I was there, you get so passionate and you get so driven about, um, your ego a little bit. And so I was doing really well in school and I was getting all these great internships and people were like, Oh my God, you're like, you're actually like really smart. And this and it kind of got to my head because I, I went in with like a marketing and entrepreneurship, like passion. That was what I thought I was going to um, go for. And then I ended up with an economics and statistics degree just, and honestly it was, I mean, like I was, I was somewhat passionate about it, but it was more so because I just knew that I, I could actually do it and it just sounded smart. And I was like, Oh my God, look at these smart things I could do. And I feel like so many young people kind of get caught up in that, you know, like, Oh, I'm going to school and I'm getting this really cool degree and I'm going to go and get this great job that is going to look so good. And I'm going to feel so good about it because like I'm working at a fortune 500 company. So like I kind of got lost in my, my four years of college um, being around that. And, and then, you know, going into my senior year that summer beforehand, I actually was working in a corporation, which I swore I would never do and hated every single second of it. Um, but in, in that, in that last experience for me was what pushed me. It was like, Oh yeah. Remember who you really are and, and what you really want to do. So working in a corporation, what didn't you like about that? Since you did graduate at the top of your class and you did have two very cool degrees. Yeah. Um, for me, I mean, I'm not, a, I don't like to work at desks, so I am really uninspired by looking, working at a desk, but like, that's like probably the like least, least part of it. For me, I don't like being told when to show up and when to leave. Um, I'm very independent, but also I just feel like you should be able to work in your zone of genius. Like you should be able to work in your zone of, you know, if I work better in mornings or in nights, like, like I want to be able to work then. I also hated the fact that I my, I wasn't being really valued. Like I was printing off things and, and, and highlighting and doing simple math and like getting somewhat of a say. And I was like, I'm not adding to anyone's life right now. Like I am not adding value to anyone. I'm just helping a really expensive, like really, really well off company do a little bit better. And I felt like I wasn't helping or, you know, being valued. Um, I hated the community within, you know, corporate America, people that hate Mondays and love Fridays and, you know, are, putting other people down within the corporations and gossiping because you know they they're trying to beat their way to the top and it's just really cutthroat um and I think the biggest thing for me though was I took my mom and dad always taught me they're like whatever you do whatever you decide to pursue like you can tell where you're going to be where the people above you are so if you are going to pursue like a certain career look at those people that are the most successful in that career and is that where you want to be 
And so I was looking at these people and I'm like, okay, well, my boss's boss, nope, don't want that. My boss's boss, my boss. And I got all the way up to the top and I'm like, they still only have three weeks paid vacation. And there, and it's like, there's nothing, and there's nothing wrong with corporate America. If you love what you do and you're in an environment that you love, but like where I was at and like how I, it just wasn't for me. And I was just looking at these people being like, that's just not like, that doesn't make me feel good that like I could work here for 30 years and still not be having the life that I want to live. Yeah. And I, I think that's really cool how your parents just influenced you to just dream big, go after it since. I mean, they were pretty much self-employed their whole lives and were there to, I mean, have lunch with you, coach you through tennis and soccer. And yeah. I mean, that's definitely what I strive for. Yeah. So what are you seeing with like post-grad, um, your friends who are building their own business, your friends who are working for the really prestigious companies and then your life, what are the main differences between all that? Um, so... <laughs> Mostly, most of my friends, I mean, I have some friends that are really loving their career path. I mean, we're, we're still really young. You went to school for four years to get this degree. You're it's still like, um, the beginning of your career. It's so exciting, but I do have a lot of friends that in, in major, in majority of what I'm seeing, we're reaching that like eight month mark and are really unhappy with where they're at there. I, I always say, I'm like, they coach us to get our dream job, but not our dream life. And so you get there thinking like, oh my God, I want to, I want this achievement. And then a lot of my friends, um, and my, um, people that I graduated where with got that job that they thought they always wanted. And then the reality sat like sat in that it was like, wow, like this is what I actually do. Like it's, it's so much different than it is in a classroom. Like in a classroom, you're showing up for an hour and you're studying it and you're learning it. But in a job you're going there, um, uh, for eight, nine, sometimes 10. I had, I had friends working hundred, um, hour weeks and we're really miserable. And a lot of them are, you know, leaving their jobs after just one year and, and, and pursuing different career paths and different ideas and thinking about starting their own businesses um, because they just realize that, you know, it's not all that, that it's cracked up to be unless you're really in the field that you love and you have a really good work-life balance. Yeah. I mean, definitely makes sense. So have you, do you have friends of yours who are just in that field where they're absolutely loving what they're doing and like building their own business and going after it. Um, do you mean like friends that are actually building their own business? Yeah, exactly. Like post post grad, especially yeah. absent. Yeah, totally. I have, I have a decent, I would say like five to 10% of the people that graduate from Babson go right out to starting their own business. Not like it's not as, it's not as much right out of the door. Um, Babson really teaches you that entrepreneurship doesn't always mean starting your own business. You can be entrepreneurial within a job and that, and it basically means being able to be an entrepreneurial person, being able to go, not just go with the flow, but recreate opportunities out of nothing and, and be the type of employee that's creating something in, into your, in your, um, in your organization. Um, which a lot of companies are now looking for, which is something I found while I was going through interviewing processes. But um, a friend wise, like I have a lot of friends who have, you know, gone out and they've created some really epic stuff um, and just giving back in the world that it's just like, it's honestly so cool to see and follow them on like there's different apps that they're cre they've created. Um, there's this one really cool one that the heating systems for hotels. Um, and it's really cool to see them just end up on these really random um, fields because you would think going to business school, like everyone ends up like in business, but like a lot of them took their business degrees and then went to different fields. And a lot of them went home to family businesses and, and whether it be, um, you know, oil or, you know, manufacturing or any of those types of things. I, I literally absolutely love seeing friends that do well, like seeing kids mm -hmm. at school, like grinding away at that internship, 60, 80 hours a week. And then they end up getting that job on wall street or the guy who gets his app like up there. Yeah. For, for you personally, Chelsea, why did you choose a network marketing track as opposed to maybe starting your own business, working for a startup or just getting out and pursuing a corporate job after your internship? Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, network marketing was something that was always, I always was in love with. Like I was the person that went on college interviews and when they asked me what I wanted to do, I was like network marketing. And they were like, I'm not gonna lie, half of them didn't know what it was. And the other half of them was like, what? Um, but I always, I've always wanted to do it. But the reason why I really, like, like I said, I got a little bit of lost, a little bit sidetracked while I was at college. And what really sent it home for me is that I had actually attended 
an event at my um, company for my parents because my parents had got back into network marketing when I was a freshman in college. And I was just seeing so many young people make a difference and like actually have control over their lives and actually enjoy what they were doing and, and more so be passionate about what they're doing. And I'm, I'm a very passionate person. Like I get, and one of the things I didn't like about corporate was that I didn't like that. I couldn't have passion about things. Like it would be really weird if I walked in and I was like, Oh my God, like today we're going to like read the reports and like, like that's just be so weird. So like, I love to be able to be creative and, and passionate and, and let that part of me out. Um, but it was also like, I have, um, I always say I'm like half my mom, half my dad. And my mom is very, um, of the creative side and that my dad's very financial. And I was always brought up with this financial mindset and always taught like the difference between linear, um, leveraged and residual income. And, you know, linear is exchange time for money. And, you know, whether you're a hairdresser or a doctor, you're exchanging time for money. It's just whether, how much you're getting paid for that time. Um, and then there's leverage, which is owning your own business, um, owning real estate where your money's working for you, but you still have a lot of risk tied to it. Um, it's not, you know, it's still based on your efforts, but it's, you know, growing faster than it would in a, in a linear position. And then there's residual, which is build something once and get paid for your life. And that was always something that I knew. I mean, that that's what actors do. That's what professional athletes do when they have different, um, you know, brands they support, uh, because you know, you get a, a residual off of every time a CD is sold. And so that was that initial financial, um, idea was always put in my mindset. It's like, if I'm going to come out of college at 22 years old and I'm going to have to pick a path, I might as well put myself on the path that's going to have the most vertical up upright, right? Like I might as well start off here because it has the biggest up to go. And then on top of that, like other than just building a residual income, but knowing that I could make like I could eventually use that residual income to do something so much bigger than I could um, with it just a linear because, you know, I have like a theory that we are at a point in our, we're at a point in our society where we're reaching a breaking point um, when it comes to how we, how we earn an income. And I always say like when the industrial revolution happened, there was, that was a breaking point with how we earned it earned a living beforehand. You were, you know, farming the land and doing stuff like that. But when there was the industrial revolution, it allowed people to start owning businesses and to start, you know, leveraging things and having machines work for you. And that changed the way we do, you know, earn an income. And I really think we're at that point where people are, you know, have online businesses. People are utilizing social media. People are creating income streams that are different. And I think that what is so amazing for our generation is that we can now, instead of being, you know, barely pay, pay, being able to afford ourselves, never mind give back to the world, we can condense our lifespan of our income stream really, really fast. And what happens when you do that is you're able to give back and follow your passion so much sooner in life than when you're 40 and 50 and 60 and then start giving back because it just took that long to get financially stable and then pay for your family and stuff like that. And Chelsea, I love what you said about just, the way that times are changing when we hit the industrial revolution. Like someone was talking about it in my real estate office today, how like Uber, you look at, they're one of the biggest companies in the world, but they don't own taxis. They're just creating a ton of leverage and Airbnb. Yeah. I mean, look at how much money they make, but they don't own any hotels. So just yeah. goes to show that like times are changing and the ways to create an income are changing, which is Absolutely. crazy. Yeah, totally. So, what what are some of the biggest lessons that uh, you've learned from your parents? And I mean, I'm sure your parents being so successful, they've had a lot of friends who were in the same demographic also building their own business. What have you learned from that? The most important lessons? Most important. Oh my God. I, that's going to take a second to think about. I mean, the biggest one I always talk about that was really huge for me is my parents always said to me, like, stay green and grow um, because if you ripen, you rot. And that always really stuck with me because I think that um, in life, a lot of us, we go through high school and then we go through college and then we go through our first couple of years in a, in a, um, whatever field we go into and then we stop growing. And one of the things that I've really learned from them and what they've always taught me and, and watching them always continue to grow and learn new things and master new things is that people underestimate how much they can do in a lifetime and overestimate how much they can do in a day. You know, and people think that we, if, if I just decide to like, you know, go and master the guitar next week, like that's really not going to happen. But if I decide to, you know, continue to stay grow and, and put, add more into my life every single day, like I, 
you know, Francis, you're one of those people that I watch you all the time since we've met, like you, you know, graduated college and you are, have your, um, two of your own businesses, but then you at, you layered in having this and learning how to, you know, um, have a YouTube channel and then, you know, learning how to have a different business. Like that's something that I so look up to and, and think that is so awesome because so many of us, we get stagnant and we forget to continue to grow. Um, so that is one of the bigger things that they've taught me. Um, I mean, there's like a million going through my head right now, but I mean, like reading, like that was just always a thing. Like my mom read all the time, you know, like I, like I'm sitting in my mom's office now, right. And there's just like a million books in here that are on, like if I was ever looking for a book on money, like that was, it's like in my, like Robert Kiyosaki, Tony Robbins, like all the cassettes, like those were always in my house. Um, personal development, just like always working on yourself because I honestly think that, a lot, I mean, there's the two major things that are not taught in school that is like absolutely mind blowing to me is personal development and um, fi personal finance. It's just not taught. Like no one's like, Hey, how do you, how do you personally, you know, make money? Like, I mean, you can learn finance if you want, you can learn accounting, but you're not ever going to, no one's going to teach you how to invest, teach you how to do pay taxes, teach you how to, you know, make your money, how to save and stuff like that. And then personal development, how to work on yourself, how to love yourself, how to um, become a better person, you know, how to be a better, like influential person, a friend. Those are things that I think is so missing. And I was so blessed to grow up with parents who knew that those were important things um, and to layer that into my life. And Alex Morin and, entrepreneur that was featured on Forbes I actually interviewed him on this channel too and he actually comes from parents who made millions of dollars in the real estate and the insurance business he literally says the same thing how he went through school and no one teaches them like how to get a mortgage or how to go and invest your money or how to publicly speak which are some of the most important lessons in life yeah completely so for you Chelsea what what's your next three to five years looking like what plans do you have in mind for yourself i love i like love this question because people always ask me that and then i literally like i think every single time i've answered with something different because it depends on the day <laughs> um i like for me i have a path that i want to take i obviously i want to make it to the top income ranks in my company i want to be completely um financially stable i want to be able to pay off my lots and debt of going to babson because it is not an inexpensive stool school um, but, and, but mostly I think that for me, it's what I've learned the best route to be is, is being flexible. Um, and this is something they teach all the time at Babson and it's just, it's having an idea of where you're going because you always, you don't want to just go without an, like you want to have an end goal. Like my end goal, I have like the physical things that I want to achieve. I have the personal things I want to achieve in my life, but knowing that I can get there anyway and letting, letting, um, my life kind of direct me. So like, um, you know, I think sometimes, I think sometimes at 22, a lot of people are, don't have any goal and then, you know, end up just like, Hey, I just ended up here. And then a lot of us have such rigid paths that we think we have to be going down that we end up um, being unaligned with where we're at. So I'm just trying to f know where I want to go, which is, you know, rising to the ranks. Um, as soon as I create that in, in, within my residual income, within a, a, my network marketing company, I want to be able to maybe start in, you know, investing in real estate. I think it's a really great move. Any type of passive income that you can get is a great type of income. Um, creating as much content that I can for people. I love creating content. I've been getting more into it. Uh, but just knowing that I can kind of flow with how it takes me there and with who, what it brings into my life and who comes into my life. Just giving back. And I feel like giving back to other people is so fulfilling. Uh, it really I get back all the time. Like, Oh, your, I saw your channel on YouTube. It just like inspired me to move forward in life. And I feel like if like one person in like somewhere in the United States would be watching this channel and it's like, wow, like I'm just so fired up. Like after that talk that I want to go and achieve more in life, like that would just hit right here. Absolutely. I was, um, I was on a call last night with, um, Lori and Chris Harder, um, who was doing a guest call for, um, with Peter Kelly and he, uh, Chris Harder. yeah. And when, one of the things Chris Harder said that I loved, um, is he said that so many people think giving back is a financial thing, but if we had to look at people and if, do you think that there's more poor people in the world or is there more unhappy, um, un unfulfilled people in the world that are, that need love? And it's like, 
honestly, there's that, obviously this is the bigger one. We have so many people in the world that are just needing um, to be fulfilled, needing to feel like they have more purpose, needing to have someone pour love into them. And giving back doesn't necessarily have to come from a money, but it, it can come from, you know, doing things like this, giving back in a way that's sometimes so much bigger, which is, you know, just giving pieces of yourself. Yeah, and just inspiring other people forward, just mm -hmm. making that impact on one person's life. So question for you, Chelsea. I feel like like to whoever's watching this channel, they're like, wow, like Chelsea Woodard has a perfect life, had awesome parents, goes to an awesome school. What's the toughest thing that you overcame in life, and what did you learn from that? Um, okay, so I think there's there's two here. Um, I think because at different parts of my life, um, when I was in high school, I was so dead set on being a leader. Like I was like, I will be a leader if it is the death of me. Um, I actually ran for president five years in a row and lost five years in a row. Um, like uh -huh. if anyone who knew me in high school would probably be like, this girl is the most like beat a dead horse, over the top achiever, over involved person. And like, what I really, what I learned from that experience and something that has stuck with me for so long um, is that leadership doesn't necessarily come from a title and it doesn't come from, you know, being able to tell people what to do or being overly involved. But it really comes from it, listening to people and helping other people achieve greatness in themselves. And the actions are so much more important than the title. That was a huge lesson for me. Um, to overcome and has really grown me as a person. The other one is, is that, and this is true for probably everyone in the entire world, is that we are all dealing with this crazy ego in our head. And I don't mean ego in the sense of like, I have an ego, but like ego as in like soul and ego. And like, no matter how awesome somebody looks on the outside, no matter how much is going on in somebody's life, they are always battling. They're always constantly at a battle with, you know, self, negative self-talk. Um, whether they are a positive person or outgoing person, you know, there's always something inside of you that's telling you um, that you can't. Um, and that's literally just trying to protect you from going to new levels in your life. And one of the things I've really been working on in the next, in the last year of my life, was pushing those barriers of, um, you know, believing in myself and pushing those barriers of helping other po people believe in themselves because you know, you, you feel a lot of tension and contrast whenever you're trying to do something new. Cause I mean, we're taught like as kids, it's like, Oh, if you fall down when you're walking, no one's gonna be like, okay, you should not walk again. Like, you know what I mean? But like as adults, it's like, if you fail, like if I go and try and make a sale and like, they don't, you know, they respond really poorly or cause you know, I used to do straight up cut -cut sales. So like I was like cold calling and like, it, it's hard. And like you just, and people, people can be hard on you too. And perceptions can be hard. Um, but it's just understanding that we all deal with that um, inner battle in our heads and that overcoming that and pushing in, in a lot of just like self-acceptance and self-love is so important and being like, all right, well, I really sucked at that today, um, but it's going to be okay because I'm going to be fine at it tomorrow. And the only way to get better is to kind of like push, push through the fog. Yeah, just keep pushing through because so many people like they just give up within the first opposition and it's... Mm -hmm. I don't know, you've probably seen a quote where like Howard Schultz has gotten denied by like 250 banks before he started Starbucks. J.K. Rowling denied by so many publishers and if she would have quit, there would have been no Harry Potter. Exactly. So, exact same lesson. Exactly. Definitely. Any last words? We have one minute left. Um, I don't think so. I think we covered everything. I, I mean, this was a great call. I really thank you for having me on it because I mean, I love talking with you anytime, but I love also being able to give back in any way. So I'm really appreciative for asking me to be on this tonight. Yeah. And then you too, it's just so up, uplifting because you have so much energy that like whenever I'm having a sh shitty day, it's like, Hey Chelsea, what's up? And I'm just like right back at it. Yeah. Maybe I drink too many e-shots. I don't know. <laughs> awesome guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Looking forward to having Chelsea like five, 10 years from now, looking forward to what she accomplishes. See you guys. Good night.